Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm your main host, Natasha Legero. <laughs> and I'm your secondary host, Moshe Kasher. Uh, the people have spoken, Moshe. They want more women talking in general. Not on our podcast, but just... You mean half the people have spoken. <laughs> Uh, maybe 51%. Right. No men are like, well, some men are, but they're like really trying to like kiss ass. You yeah. Know? They're, they're like, we want more women. Most mean, men I know are like, I mean, I'm not like that. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not like that. I hear you. <laughs> Natasha, it is the dawn of a new year. We are close to New Year's Eve. Of course, everybody should come to our digital New Year's Eve comedy show. Yeah, oh, three years into the pandemic, we're still doing digital I mean, what can comedy. you do? I mean, fucking... I, honestly, when I did digital comedy, the last New Year's Eve, was that last New Year's mm -hmm. Eve? It was really great. I had the same it feeling when I came off stage that I have at a venue. So was that really was fun. actually, that's why I agreed to do it again. If you'd like to join us, of course, you can go to this website. And buy your tickets. They'll be live by the time we release this episode. Um, we're making some other changes in the new year. Uh, we're going to start coming out on Tuesday. Now, for production reasons that are not interesting and you will not care about, we're going to do that. And I just can't wait for this new chapter of Tuesdays. And here's another big change in the Endless Honeymoon Podcast expanded universe. Uh, we've been collecting advice questions from you guys that don't want to come on the show just sending us stuff in your stories and things like that and uh, we have a whole bunch of them we're going to spend the year making our way through the mailbox we're going to spend the year making fun of you yeah but also trying to give you some really good advice you know as we do no i'm here. looking through these they're great all right can, can i just ask a yeah, few ask one okay i know what your answer is to this one mosh okay Okay, this person asks, does house need to be spotless when in-laws come over? Three kids, okay if not spotless, right? <laughs> That's a, a leading question, isn't it? Um, what do you think to that? You know, I've started, as I've been getting ready for in-laws, you know, coming in and out, my take on it is that'll do. Sure, as, sure. And, and another, another mantra I have is uh, as little as possible. Well, here's my thought on this question. Or... That's good. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> That'll do, pig. Yeah. Like, you know, I just feel like I actually had a, I actually had a vision of myself washing the sheets for the bed that the in-laws would stay on and just leaving them on the sheet, on the bed, and then they can just put them on. Like, I will never put on another duvet. I can't do that anymore. Well, here, yeah, I think duvets, thank you for that. That is. You're welcome. Now, that is a spicy take. Thank you. Uh, duvets are worthless. No, they, I just can't do it. No, they are worthless. They're I not, don't want to do it. It's a two-person job, and I don't want to share that job with anybody. What is the value of a duvet? I do not understand it. Well, it's so you don't just have like a raw quilt on your face raw? or something? I mean, it, it, it's or the plain? same material. The know. duvet and the quilt are the same material. I think it's something to do with like being dirty or something like that. No, if you went to a hotel, they wouldn't just have like a plain duvet without a cover on your Listen, bed. Listen, hotels, I would not say, are the paradigm of comfy That's blanket. True. That's it's true. It's always some like weird drape that they put over that you can't you can't get off of the bed very easily because the, the maid has like stuffed it military style under the mattress. But here's my thought on um, in-laws and cleaning up. It depends on the in-laws. Certain in-laws, they come once a year. They're more formal. They make you uncomfortable. Those people, you're going to want to spick and span it, right? You think? For people that, you know, it's like if you... If oh, my dad. My dad got so mad when we came and we were like giving the dogs dog food in the regular bowls. Oh, he like, he went and bought dog bowls. I remember your dad. And he was just, he's, he would only, wait, one more thing about my dad. There's one leather chair in the entire house and he, that's, he would sit on the edge of that because he didn't want any dog hair to like get near him. Here's the thing about your dad. He once told me to put my feet down in my house on my table. I was like, uh, this is my house. I put my feet where I want. Okay. I didn't say that, but I thought it strongly. Uh, but I think with a more casual in-law, like my 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 parent, my like mom. Like your, your mom comes over and doesn't do her dishes. <laughs> you are so lucky she's deaf and can't hear this podcast. But I'm just because saying. Because that is very disrespectful. But I'm just saying, yeah, with her, we're probably not going to clean up for I'm her. I'm not spicking and spanning f with the woman that taught me how to be a hoarder. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I think about that. So it depends. Whew. The answer is it depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. Um, okay, let me see if I got a, a one of these. 
uh, mailboxes. Okay, but then Moshe won because then we have an important okay, guest. Okay, okay. Here's one that y- you'll probably relate to. Okay. This one comes to us from, oh, uh, maybe they don't want us to say their names. Okay, listen. Yeah, no, this make it anonymous. Says, I might intimidate men because I'm cultivated, smart, talented. How do I find a confident man? You just have to keep looking. It's like 30% of them. So you just, it's like a numbers game. You have to go on like six dates or something to find one cool guy. Anybody that, here's my, this is what I think. Anybody that's describing themselves as so awesome, they're, uh, they are intimidating potential suitors. It's, it's not that. No, the, it's different for a woman. When men get intimidated, a lot of men just want a plus one. A lot of men just want like a girl who's going to like be part along for their dumb ride. And they don't want a girl who's like dynamic and, and has her own career and charismatic and the life of the party and gets everything done and has her own business. And men are typically intimidated by that. I'm assuming this was a woman that wrote that. I don't know because we're keeping it anonymous. I'm assuming. Can you tell me her sex? (laughs) I don't assume sex anymore. Okay. Well, can you? Yeah, it's a woman. Okay. Okay, So, you know, I'm just saying like men can get very intimidated by stuff. Okay. So. So I'd like to give my funny take, quippy funny take on this. Yes, honey. I think it's too late though now because now if I give the take I was going to give. then You're insensitive. Then it seems like I'm uh, putting support beams under the patriarchy. And that's the last (laughs) thing I want to do. I want to smash that bad boy. (laughs) But what I was going to say is if you're like, why doesn't anybody like me? I'm so fucking unbelievably cool, awesome, confident, smart, rich, and intimidating. It's like uh, maybe (laughs) maybe it's not that no man is confident enough to be around you. Maybe you're always talking about how awesome you are when you go out on dates. But again, I don't even believe that because now that I think about it in a, in a more rounded and uh, an intersectional perspective, I now realize that's just me and uh, uh, supporting systemic misogyny. And I really think that the secret for you is to go to uh, grad school mixers and you'll be able to find some really confident, smart men. Okay. Well, listen, we have a very fun guest today. Let's, uh, can, can we give him, can you give him an intro? Can we give him a call? I'll give him an intro. He's the host of the Grawlix Save the World podcast, along with other very funny comedians. And he has just released a stand-up comedy album called Hot Takes. He's a very funny man and always been a very sweet man to me as well. Let's welcome our guest, Adam Caton Holland, the crown, the crown prince of Denver stand-up comedy. Adam, Caton, Hi, Adam. Holland. Hey. Wait, you have a room in your house. Ha- you have a room in your house that's like the back the backdrop of a comedy club (laughs) yeah i haven't stopped i haven't stopped doing comedy just i'm in this room all the time doing it oh this is a stand-up comedy club and you live there welcome to this show is anyone celebrating anything tonight (laughs) we are actually we're celebrating having our friend adam on the podcast it's been a long time dream of ours and it's finally come true well i know you live in a historic house so maybe this is just part of the house yeah, actually, this is my garage, uh, which I converted into an office. I'm going Gorgeous. through a Marin, a, a Marin reboot <laughs> you know, out in the garage. <laughs> you know what we think you should call that, and that's actually why we wanted to have you on the podcast tonight, is uh, we think we have a term for what you could call that garage space. Okay. Have you ever heard of a, this is something we came up with on the podcast, a man cave. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. You guys, you guys just thought of that together? It's like riffing. It's a pretty clean man cave, though. It's it very, is. It's yeah. very proper. It's like a gentleman's cave. It's an anal man cave, <laughs> which is a different kind of, it's a whole different kind of club. Yeah, well, Moshe, you're welcome at the anal man cave anytime <laughs> you want to come over, dude. So how, how many hours a day, because you're married with a kid, how many hours yep. a day is cool for you to be out in your man cave? Uh. It's very, the morning hours are, are okay. But even then my three-year-old comes and is like, nope, mom's not watching me enough that I came to knock on your office door. So time's up. Would, you, would you say like eight to 12 is kind of like y- your wife? That's yes. cool. Okay. Yeah, nine, nine to 12. Is nine to I, 12. I can get some stuff done. Other than that, it's full-time dad-ass shit because we have two now. Oh, what? Shit. Two kids? Why'd you do that? N- Natasha, by the way, Natasha's um, barometer of what a big family is is so <laughs> warped by like Hollywood <laughs> and liberal values and stuff. Every time we meet someone with two kids, she's like, what are you, Mormon? Two kids? <laughs> well, I live in Colorado, so Natasha, this is probably just perfect fitting for you. I have a sprawling family of two children. It's <laughs> crazy. Big bloated Midwest gag. What have you been doing? We doubled down. We doubled down on the pandemic, guys. I don't know. We like saw the way the earth is going, liked it, wanted to add another kid. (laughs) And uh, here we are. That is so true. Wait, how old is your youngest? 
seven months oh, so yesterday. That, no, that's what I was hoping you were going to say. That means you you really made the decision in the pandemic A to go for it again. A lot of people did. Wild. Because, you know, um, in the apocalypse, you need an army. That's so true. But there's going to be less I, resources. It was, I was going to go to Edinburgh Fringe 2020, with, you know, a lifetime ago. And they were going to come but with then it was my one year old, my wife. and like, let's start trying in Edinburgh for the second. Let's just have a fringe baby because we're cool like that. And yeah. then uh, and then that date rolled around and we were all in hell. And we're like, you still want to do this? And we're just like, why the fuck not? So we did. You know what I admire about that is I, when I think of the Edinburgh fringe, I think there's a 50 50 shot that I will be unable to perform sexually depending on how the run goes, you know, like every, I've never done the Edinburgh fringe, but to those listening, the way that it works is that you go to Scotland and you perform an hour of stand up every night for one full month. And if you're American and not like super famous, the first week is like everything. And if you don't get good reviews in the first week, then the next three weeks, your shows will be under attended and no one will show up and you might even lose money depending on the way you go about doing it. So the idea, that's why I was always scared to do it. The idea that I would go Go there, eat shit the first week, and then spend three fucking <laughs> weeks. Three, you think a you think a Tuesday through Sunday run at a club is rough? Like three weeks of empty houses doing a full hour just sounded like such torture. So, Adam, did you end up going back? Are you going to go next year? What's how do you how do you reschedule something like that? I might go in twenty twenty two. We'll see. Now that I got two kids, it's a whole different ball game. And I kind of want to see if I can maybe sell this show without the trip there. But we'll see. And I like what you were saying earlier most about like how I was betting on myself to perform sexually. Also, my show is about suicide that I would be doing for 30 <laughs> days straight. And I was like, you know what? I'll throw a baby into this man. No, I feel like fucking after this show. Even better, um, even better. You, you, if you bomb during a suicide hour, which is like, I'm going to find, like, I have this very heavy experience and I'm going to, I'm going to mine it for laughter and I'm, but then there's no laughter, so all you're left with is this like swill of like sadness. Then you go home to your wife, like, let's start a family. <laughs> I want to double down on these jeans. Uh, so what have you been doing other than that? So you spent two years. Did you go on the road? Did you do anything? What have you been doing? I haven't been doing anything, dude. I just sit in this fucking garage waiting for it all to come back to me. When I, just trying to get a career back. And that's why I'm on the podcast tonight. I'm trying to jumpstart everything through the endless honeymoon you guys well listen well, we have 32 listeners so yeah. hopefully but they're very dedicated <laughs> we've got a lot of engagement with those 32 well 33 now i'm listening to every episode after this this is how i start i, I go to mine first and then I, I ride it out but you did just release an album hot takes yes i i lie i've been doing a lot of stand-up i just haven't been traveling a ton um i've been doing it around colorado a ton and i wrote an hour of stuff about the last two years we've been going through and I'm tired of telling it. I got a lot of new stuff I want to talk to you about, about kids and stuff. So I just like, screw it, put it out there. And I think everybody's very precious with comedy albums. I was like, I've got 40 minutes. It's like an EP. Let's just put it out. It's about doom doomsday. So let's just get it out and move on. Yeah. You've been, uh, you've been an, uh, one of these unusual outliers in comedy in that you've been able to re make a good living, be funny and be relevant from the mountains of Colorado. I mean, Denver, but still just this whole time. Like you've never, you've never felt it. Well, he has the greatest club in America to work out oh, at. That's true. That's right. Oh, oh, I thought you meant his garage. Oh, you, you mean no, the, the, the comedy, comedy works. works. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. That is true. You do have an advantage. Well, yeah, my garage is a comedy works adjunct. I've got a fit. What if I just had a sign over there and there's like three people watching <laughs> this podcast. Can I just say that Colorado, we took a trip there to go to your comedy festival, actually the high plains comedy festival. And our drive through Colorado, I would say, equaled or beat trips that we've taken to like Tuscany and like just the most beautiful places in Europe that we've been. Like Colorado is so, I understand why you never left because it's so shockingly fucking beautiful there. I, I, I wanted to go. I love it. And like just with COVID, I've been exploring corners of it that I've never been to. I've been all over the state the last two years. So, how do you and your family get around? Do you, do you have an RV or something? No, do you, I was going to ask you guys, are you getting around in your RV still? Are you That's still how pretty? we got around Colorado. That's but how, we, how do you explore the corners? Uh, just in my Ford Escape. We just throw everybody in there and off we go. Will you I mean, stay at a hotel or than, something? Yeah, yeah. Hotel or Airbnbs or just I haven't left Colorado too much. Maybe a few gigs here and there. But like, I feel like we're all exploring where we live in way more thorough, intimate, mm -hmm. sad ways. And I've been doing that.
I've been spending a lot of time in Bakersfield and the greater Modesto area. <laughs> and I got to say, there are some pockets of California that I just, I didn't even know the beauty that was available. You like out Modesto, there. honey? Well, Modesto is not my favorite place. I, I will say that, um, that I, ca- California is funny because people hate it, hate us so much here. They hate us so. They unbe- do. Oh yeah, like California. I don't focus on that. California is like the right wing trigger trigger zone, like on on a level that isn't even psychologically manageable. I once tweeted, "I love California and I never want to leave," and I got anti Semitic death threats. I'm not joking. <laughs> What's I'm the like, connection? I don't know. Probably only a Jew could love California. I mean, I don't really know. It'd be and it would always be people. Adam, you'll appreciate this. It would be people writing me going, "You must not have gotten out very much." who are writing me from cities that I've toured doing stand-up comedy and been like, wow, yikes, would never come back, not even to do stand-up. I would never return to do stand-up. Well, it's weird. Is like, you're right. California is that left, it's that trigger word for anybody on the right. But you go an hour inland, and it's exactly like everywhere in the middle of the country. I don't understand. That. It's just the, the beachfront of California really pisses people off. Yeah, you go an hour inland, and there's people going like, I fucking hate California. It's unfortunate that I live here. <laughs> Well, I went to Lancaster for a minor league baseball game when I lived out there. And I was like, this is where the clan, this is the clan. If the city could be the clan, it's Lancaster. The truth is that co- the interior of California is more, is less uh, leftist libtard than most of Co- Colorado. Most Colorado, you're a proud libtard. I am a proud exactly libtard. Exactly right. I think it's just a catch all. Yeah, I think surprising like, these people hitting you up on Twitter haven't traveled or done their research. <laughs> um, I believe strongly in doing your own research uh, up to and including how to avoid v- viruses. So d- Adam has his own opinions about doing research, but for me, YouTube is the place you do that kind of research. <laughs> um, Natasha, well, Adam, you're you're in a good. You, you seem like you're in a happy relationship. You have like a new child. You have an established child. Um, you have a happy home. You live in a historic home. I've I've seen pictures of your home. It's amazing. Um, what would you be willing to give some advice to people? Of course, I'd love to give some advice to people the best that I could, and I love that I can project this level of success to you, Natasha, because that's all I've ever tried to do since we've met. <laughs> she always talks about how successful you are. It's usually com- I've read your book. I mean, you have like a lot. You've done so much. It's usually in comparison to how successful I am, which I don't. That's not <laughs> part of the dialogue that I appreciate. Um, wait, Adam, before we go into advice, I do have one question for you. Have you and your wife, um, have you found new areas to be strained about? How did you guys deal with the last two? Have you fought more? What have you fought about? What And really my question is, what is your flaw, fatal flaw in a relationship? What is the thing that your wife comes to you the most about that you that you know to be true or, the, or, or is the most common Adam fucked up? Um, it's when when I do something wrong and lately it's all parenting and it's all the stress of parenting, which you guys know very well. But then you drop the second one in there and suddenly it's just it's magnified and I will fuck up. I'll I'll get frustrated and, you know, I won't say the right thing to the child in the right way. And she'll point it out. And initially I'll just go, I'll get mad at her. I'll just I get in the moment. I I just am so frustrated. I cannot take being told that I'm wrong. Mm. And then I then 10 minutes later, I'm like 100 percent. I was wrong. I should you're I, like, you shut right your fucking face, you six month old. <laughs> <laughs> what is the dumbest thing you've ever said to your kid? Can you, does anything spring to mind of a real mistake you made? I think it's just you guys know when you're dealing with a young child like this, it's kind of if they throw something in anger, you're supposed to be like, we don't throw that. And, and let's play with that later when you're ready to, you know, then knock it off. Whatever. That's what I do. <laughs> right. Right. But when it's number 15 thing, you're just like, hey, or they hit you or something like that. I'll just kind of like that. I think that's the worst thing I've done. When the kids hit me, I'll grab his arm with a lot of force and Mm -hmm. just hold it down and just be like, here's a reminder that I'm so much stronger than you are. (laughs) And you can see that's not a good, that's a physical, like I'm not smacking the kid, but no, you're right. That is weird. And that's, that's Colorado force too. That's like the, that's like Paul Bunyan, right? (laughs) <laughs> That's at least uh, John Denver force. Yeah, right. do, do you and your wife, cause you're clearly confident parents to have another one. Like, do you guys feel like you have a philosophy that you try to abide by? Like you're just, or does your wife have one or is there something that you like, you're just trying to just be cool. I think we're just trying to let them honor their feelings. I think my wife in particular was always told when she was a kid, you're wrong for thinking that it's not a big deal if you're bothered by that. I feel like 
her parents never listened to her on anything. And so she is way overcorrecting to like, we're listening to this kid. If they're having an irrational feeling, well, they're having that feeling. So we're going to get down there and have that feeling with them. Whereas I'm like, nah, that's a fucking irrational feeling. Moshe uh, doesn't buy that. He's always well, like, you're not hurt. You're okay. Well, it's not that I don't buy I don't, it. You didn't do that. It's not that I don't buy it. No, I, I buy it. I understand the philosophy behind it. And I think it makes, it, there's some sense that it makes. You don't, you don't practice it though. No, I, I try to split the difference, I think. I think like, I think that, you know, the, the refrain is like, you wouldn't talk to you, you, someone you respect like that. You wouldn't talk to your, your brother like that, but it's like, yeah, but I wouldn't wipe my brother's ass either. Like there's a, there is a power <laughs> differential that, but, but I think your wife is right too, that I think sometimes that, that we, you know, the, uh, the last generation of parenting was so r- rage based. That's all, I, that's what I had too. And I think kind of sort of true for you too, is anger and rage and not listening no one was like oh you don't feel well let me get down to your level do you need some water what i'm sorry you're not feeling that way i'm sorry you want to hit the tv with the remote i'm so sorry it's it's, like it's it's it's, it requires so much from you as the person it almost uh presupposes that you have nothing else to do but (laughs) parent these but it sounds like that's how you are talking to your daughter right natasha i mean you're very (laughs) down on her level and no i am i am but it's exhausting you know but i definitely do it i can't not do it because it feels mean and i remember my mom telling me something once like i she was like no you you did you you hid this and i was like no i didn't and i remember being like very like like adamant that like uh, no one listened to me adam did you get hit when you were a kid no and and you were saying our parents were this rage-based my parents are such hippies, so kind, so supportive. Aww. My dad comes to all my shows now. What? That's here's, so cute. Here's, here's a joke and calls me up and is like, dude, you're George Carlin. Like, I, I don't understand why everybody doesn't like bow down at your feet. It, it's so far from where I want it to be that it's ridiculous. Like, so now I'm trying to course correct and go back to like his dad's approach a little. I'm, I'm trying to split the diff between my grandfather and my dad. Because your dad, dad's, gone y- your dad's like way too like, you're amazing. You're the world. The Everyone should sniff your shit. They should be so lucky. I mean, he, my dad is very kind. And all my comedy friends are like, I wish I could have your dad. But it's too much. Everything I do is fucking amazing. I can't do anything bad in my dad's eyes. And I was like, you've lost all discretion i don't i can't value your opinion anymore because if everything i do is great then then it's none of it's great you the know what problem I mean? is if you want to get really famous you have to have a dad like like for example stephen sondheim or his mom his mom wrote him a letter on his deathbed on her, on her deathbed. deathbed and said my only mistake in life is giving birth to you <laughs> <laughs> but that now that really gets it kicking you know like that's where you start like the ambition kicks in you're like blow you're gonna blow this pop stand get the fuck out of denver you're gonna like start like you know maneuvering in la and like you know doing whatever it takes to like try to earn that love i mean stephen sondheim i use as an example but you know he's an incredibly talented genius what what i'm thinking you're you're right you're right you're right sorry you were saying i've accomplished a lot and i stay in denver if my dad had been a little crueler i'd be apatow yeah (laughs) (laughs) right your level of talent but with a little less love from your dad you wait should we be loving them less yeah maybe well it depends on what we want to engender do we want them to be happy like adam or do we want them to be tortured you know like i don't want her to be tortured but like i don't want her to feel i want her to feel loved why do you feel like you have to course correct that no i don't i just think that like i honestly think about it now how my dad is and and it's all the stuff you know when they're gone you're gonna miss the hell out of it but he calls me every day He's Aww. like a friend. He's kind of like a needy, loving man. It's sweet. But I've always thought like when I'm an adult and my kid's an adult, I'm going to let them come to me versus like. You're going to play hard to get. Do you always answer yeah. the phone when he calls you? No, but I feel bad if he, I, I'll see him and be like, God, he just wants to talk. Aww. And then I'll call him back later when I have some more time. You talk to whatever, him pretty much daily? Absolutely. That's cool. I mean, that's cool. You want to hear is something? Is it? Is it? Or I, is it sad? Is well, it? cool in a, in a cool, like in the way that cool can mean like sweet. Okay. It's, it's definitely, right. Yeah. It wouldn't be classic. Cool. It's I mean, definitely you know, you know, one of the good options. You know, you know that. Yeah, Adam, it's healthy. You know that Adam Kane Holland, that dude is the coolest guy. He talks to his dad fucking daily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say this. Uh, 
that, that might surprise you. My father also comes to all of my stand-up comedy shows. He's been dead 20 years now, and wow. it's getting spooky, honestly. it's it's. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not enjoying it. Um, okay, honey, we have calls, okay. and they're Let's waiting. Write a script. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, script. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, let's do it. We're gonna we're going to uh, do some advice now. Okay, we're gonna call Garrett in Dallas. Hey, Garrett, hold on. We can hear you, but hey. not see you. What's okay. up? What's um, up? Sounds emo. I see that. Maybe you, he has Omicron. No, no he's not okay. emo. Oh no, oh, you look, look healthy. Sound emo. <laughs> yeah, look at you. You look cool. You look like a little French sailor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think that's a compliment. Um, no, it is. You're you're a good looking guy. So Garrett, um, thank you. It's you ever Natasha, been in the anal man cave? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, don't worry about it. It's Natasha Moshe and our friend Adam Caton Holland. Well, hi everyone. It's very nice to meet all, meet all of y'all. Nice to meet you too, and thank you for yalling us. Uh, we knew <laughs> now. We, yeah, now we know we got a text. Yeah, we, we know we got a Texan on the line. We've been yeah. yalled. Uh, what's happening, Garrett? Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess my main question is, um, I'm trying to figure out whether I'm judging two girls like girls too harshly on the first date, um, or if I should just like go with my instincts and whether or not I like them. Uh, because I've been through like a pretty big change in my life over the last two months, um, you know, kind of all stemming from the first real heartbreak that I faced in my life. Uh, so I'm just having trouble seeing if I'm like comparing all these girls to her or I'm just really not feeling a connection with any of them. Well, I like that. I, I, and sorry about the heartbreak. And it sounds like it was pretty severe that you've been on multiple dates since then. Yeah, it was it was pretty tough for like a couple of days. But um, I a couple just, like, days. Like... Yeah, that's cool, man. You're like, this is a, a major heartbreak I've been through. I've been through mul- multiple dates since then. I don't like any of these girls. <laughs> it's but been a rough couple it was days. Two days there where I was feeling pretty low. We broke up on a Monday. The next Monday was the best day of my life. <laughs> but no, but honestly, that Tuesday and Wednesday that was that was rough. No, so rough. but you're kind of doing a nothing compares to you type of thing. Is that right? Like you, you're comparing these girls to the one that broke your heart and going nobody lives up to this yeah i think i think that might be part of the problem it's so hard but what one thing you're doing that's really good and healthy is that you're like questioning that so you're like well maybe this person is someone who i might like if i weren't so instead of just being like fucking hate everybody this is the worst you know like it feels like you have a little bit of openness so you know i think you just have to kind of hang in there and you know you don't want to be I know it's so hard, but you don't really want to be around someone who, who doesn't feel it the same, you know? So you just have to like know that you're capable of, you know, big feelings and just keep, keep going out there and not continually dating people who bore you. You know, I think just remaining interested in people, you're going to find someone who's, who's as dynamic to you as, as she was. What do you think, Adam? Any thoughts on this? Well, we were joking because you said, you know, uh, it was a rough couple of days. But honestly, you said, would you also said two months ago you had this major heartbreak, right? Yeah, it was two months ago. In my mind, if it was, you know, this big life altering heartbreak, two months is not a lot of time at all. So to, to for you to just be like completely recovered. So I think the shadow of this past person might still be there. It's such that you're kind of not really open to anyone new quite yet. And I think you just just rec- sometimes like in therapy, if you can just like point to the thing and say, that's the thing, then it, that might help you date. Be like, you know what? I am still reeling from this past person. So you could still date and stuff, but maybe that's why you're just not as open to it yet. You need to mourn a little more or something. That's just what yeah. I was going to say, Garrett. The same thing is like that that no one could compare to the person who's still freshly ripping a scab off of your heart i mean she's right there her specter is right there much like my father at every comedy club that i ever attend her she's she's haunting you so it's not these women's it's not these women's fault for not be, they're not it's not that it's actually not that they're not good enough they may or may not be good enough no one would be good enough compared to this person who you're pro- and you, if you're how old are you i'm 24 you're 24 you're young and you're probably if if you're anything like me dating a lot to try this this is the way i would do it when i would get my heart broken my next thought my next turn would be i gotta go get laid i gotta like fuck this fuck the pain away maybe that's, that's not, not you. everyone honey well it's 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 a lot of men honey uh it, it like it, i would it, you know but he's emo he's not he's a french naval <laughs> officer and they have loyalty to the flag and to yeah i got 
the car. Yeah, I got responsibilities. Yeah, that, that's right. You got to uh, batten down the hatches. But uh, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even I'm not suggesting that you're like some fuck boy. I'm saying like a lot of men. What we do is we try to either fuck or date. We try to feel um, s- desirable again. After somebody hurts us, we go, let me go find where I'm desirable. So I'll go out on a date and then I'll go, what am I doing here? This feels pointless and meaningless. I had something that was good. So it's like this will go away. This is going to evaporate. Much like the mists in the seas that you sail through with your uh, other naval officers, this is just going to evaporate, and then you'll be like, "I'll find somebody else." Fuck yeah. her. Yeah. The- <laughs> Fuck her. Um, but yeah, should I be like feeling like a like a spark on these dates, or is it like? Because I feel like all all of them. I feel like the conversations go pretty well. You know, like we'll have some laughs here and there, but it never feels like. Like I'll have like a spark or something that like really wants makes me want to go on another date, you know. Well, like, well, what's the what was the thing? So you're not really slutty, is what I'm getting from you. You're kind of a of a good good guy kind of a thing. I mean, I'm going on all these dates in the hopes that I find someone that like I truly connect with and want to you know spend a long time with. Honestly, dude, I don't know how to help you. That just sounds like some shit I don't relate to. So I gotta go. <laughs> no. Um, what was it like with your girlfriend? What was the, uh, your ex girlfriend, the one that broke your heart? What did that feel like? Well, well, it's a little, it probably needs a little bit more context. I was only with her for like actually two months, but we were talking for like six months. So it wasn't a long time, but like she was really the first person that I really felt like connected with. And like it was more that it just never felt like I had to try. Like it was just natural conversation. We were just having fun together and it never felt like it was dating it was just we were just having fun and yeah it's just having fun together well let me guess was she like super hot yeah she was she was pretty hot <laughs> and was it like kind of fun to keep the relate the conversation going with someone who was like super hot uh yeah for sure definitely yeah so you know it's like maybe you just need to like date super hot girls <laughs> that's great advice Natasha. <laughs> no, Finally, that's what i was gonna say too garrett i'd like to piggyback that only date super hot girls. <laughs> no right, but i right. mean like <laughs> your you wife's know, gonna be watching this so she he has to say that legally he has to say he's only ever <laughs> been with unbelievably beautiful women most especially the one that he I'm stayed just with saying, for the rest of his life don't let this don't let her <laughs> looks make you think that she was better at conversation than she was well but mm-hmm. but I would say this, uh, Garrett. This is uh, Adam. Did you have anything before I pontificate? This is like I don't mean keep meaning to come back to your age because I don't want to condescend to you. But this is like a, a I do. This is like an ad- a nice adult <laughs> lesson for you. Forget. I understand it was short. But that's but this was your first one. It it's you could look at it like oh what a heartbreaker. Or you could look at it like damn what a gift. I realized that my heart is capable of connecting to another person. Okay, this was not the one. This person, you know, I fell into this spell with her, and even though it was short, it felt like bigger than it was, blah, blah, blah. But now you know, now you know that you, in the future, what you're looking for, you're looking for real connection, is something that you're capable of. It, this thing, this idea that once you, that middle space, that weird mist between the last heartbreak and the next uh, uh, love connection is this weird middle ground where you feel like people always feel like they're broken or something's been cracked and that was the person, but that's not true at all. It just isn't true. And it's like, what a cool thing that you've learned about yourself that eventually you'll find someone else like that and they will be right for you. And that'll be so cool because you're emotionally capable of stepping up to that. Hopefully she's super hot. And hopefully she's super hot with like thick, you ask guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like really say th- things like yeah, he's that. In the French, he's in the French Marines. Of course, he's an asshole. <laughs> no, <laughs> we all are. Everybody on the boat is. All right. Well, <laughs> I I know it's so hard. I I will say I also wanted to add if that if I may I think I just believe if you've never had a heartbreak, you're not really a whole person. You're like this weird, just idealized. Like oh, I married my high school sweetheart, and everything's been perfect ever since. I think there's a there's a value to getting wounded this way that helps in other relationships mm-hmm. that will eventually be the one. If you never get your heart broken, you're just not a re- you're not ready for to really explore all facets of of your love. I don't think it's so true, honey. Really true. I mean, it's like if call us in a year. If you're still going out on dates with girls in a year and going like nothing compared to that one Instagram influencer I met at the Dallas mall, <laughs> then I'm like, okay, Garrett, you got some problems. Like you need to go oh, to therapy. Oh, I, I have some practical, some practical 
uh, advice, though. You should unfollow okay. or mute her on social media. Yes. You don't have to unfollow her because that's a big thing. It's a drama. You know, too much drama. But if you just mute her just for yourself and yes, some late night, you know, maybe you've had like a gin fizz or whatever it is you drink uh, and then you know you might go there but you know just try to not have it like constantly in your psyche that should help yeah totally and i and practically uh -huh. some practical advice also if you're uh, you know in your quest unable to find someone you connect with and you're feeling you know like like you need a sexual release you can meet me in denver at the anal man cave at, at Alan K adam kate holland's house and yeah we can... i'll put my address in the chat yeah. everybody. <laughs> all right i'll keep that in mind yeah, all right garrett sure. good luck out there good this luck, is just a honey. part of being human this is grist for the mill my friend and yes take I it guess from it us is. old timers right. yeah take... hang, hang in there garrett <laughs> yeah you all got right. it thanks all right. guys later nice talking to you nice you, meeting you you too by the way bye bye honey some guy broke up with me when I was young. Like, I was so upset. I remember, like, banging my head against a tile, Whoa. like, shower. Like, it didn't bleed or anything, but I was just, like, so... I was in such despair. Yeah, that early You know, heartbreak, like, man. it's so hard. He's so young, though, too. He's 24. It's, yeah. like, it's it's the perfect time. This happened right at the right time. Yeah, that's when that happens. He'll bounce back. And also, he's so like, I mean, to be 24 and be like, what I'm dating for is a is an emotional connection to someone. He's like, I want just want an emotional connection with a 10. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's ahead of the game. I mean, that's ahead of the game, I think. Yeah, but oh, that early heartbreak. Boy, that, that shit is like, it just feels so permanent and it so isn't, but no one can tell you. No one can tell you the truth, which is that everyone ever who's ever dated has felt the exact same thing and gotten over it. Plus, now he has the endless honeymoon bump. He's irresistible. That's right. <laughs> He'll never be able to turn him down. Um, all right, Adam, let's do another one. Can we do one more? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to call Shayna in where I'm from, Chicago. And Shayna is one of my people. Well, who, who are your people? The Jews, honey. How do you know she's Jewish? Uh, we'll find out in three Two. Also, one. I'm not from Chicago. I'm from Rockford. Shayna, are you Jewish? I am not. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, you think Shayna is a Jewish name? I know it is. It's a Yiddish name. It it's is. Yiddish. It means beautiful. And Shayna is culturally appropriating my people. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. You well, don't sound sorry, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Shayna, we're here with our friend Adam Caden Holland. Uh, and I know that you have his album Hot Takes, but he's here to give you some of his hot takes as well. How can we help? Hi, Shana. Hi, Adam. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so I'm mainly calling because I need some, vi some advice on how to confront my friend. So uh, one of my best friends from college is getting married next year. And the problem is that he lies to her a lot. <gasps> About what? Yeah. And you know this? Some yeah. So and she mostly, doesn't know? He, oh, my God. Mostly just about smoking. So he smokes an e-cigarette, <laughs> and he also <laughs> smokes weed. But when they first started dating, she didn't like guys who smoked, so he lied. And since I didn't really know her then, it didn't seem like it was an issue. But You can smell smoke so easily. How do you hide smoke? E-cigarette. E-cigarette. Oh, okay. Okay, he's your friend, Shana, not her. Yeah. So he, he was my friend first, and... And so she's also my friend now, but um, what really has pushed this over the edge for me is that he recently lied to her um, and said that he was hanging out with his friends when he was really at the casino gambling. So he's kind of got some concerning things going on, um, but really I just want to know how I should like bring this up and talk to him about it. And I mean, they're getting married and to my knowledge, she has no idea and mm. do you like her scary. are you friends with her yeah i do like her and i am friends with her we don't live in the same state at the moment so we don't spend a lot of time together does she text um, you like we, every week and every other day or so or what we text quite often yeah like every week not every day but i know that he's he's tried to quit smoking before but it hasn't stuck and so just the lies keep escalating <laughs> All right. Well, I, I just what don't are you think. Getting at, Natasha? Well, I guess what I'm getting at is, is she your friend? Because <laughs> this is, is not so your problem. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's my friend, and so I don't, I don't want to lie to her anymore from here. 
but also, I mean, it's kind of concerning that she's marrying him and he's possibly addicted to gambling. <laughs> and cigarettes and maybe weed. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can be addicted to weed, but. I mean, I think you can. Wait, okay, okay. I'm trying to like get off. Snoop, Snoop Dogg's addicted to weed. Well, the truth about Snoop Dogg and Shayna, if you could just hold on a second because I've got some thoughts here. You know, the thing about Snoop is he smokes 20 blunts a day. And a blunt is a is a joint wrapped in a cigar tube. And so it's like, at a certain point, doesn't he just smoke cigarettes? Like, isn't he just a cigarette smoker? He's got, I mean, that's so much that he's 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 X'd out any advantage of not smoking by smoking so much tobacco. Yeah, he's just a cigar aficionado. <laughs> that's now. right. Um, I have some thoughts, but Adam, do you have any, you have a hot take, first of all? I'm a little confused. Uh, Thanks for dropping that again. Most appreciate that. I got you. I mean, it kind of what Natasha was hinting out, like how close are you to this bride to be? Are you texting her once a week? Do you text him more? I mean, have you met her in person once or do you see her often? I'm just confused about the relationship. Yeah. So we're not that close, but I do consider her a friend. I'm definitely more of a best friend with the guy. So I, I don't feel like that's why I've never said anything in the past is because I don't really feel like it's my place to say anything. But at this point, I mean, it's related to finances and right, they're getting right. married. Like, I'm just wondering if I should even say anything to him to bring it up or just. Well, you see goes. the, you see the potential of you, be you being put in a bad spot. You're like slowly becoming closer with her. You know, mm-hmm. they're getting married. It's ramping up. You're starting to see all this bad behavior and you are then, you know, kind of not forced, but socially you're going to be, th- put in a room with her like I I feel mm-hmm. like you do have some leg to stand on in, in terms of just like talking to him and being like hey I just want you to know like this this and this just makes me slightly uncomfortable because I really love blank and we're friends and mm-hmm. I just this makes me feel a little uncomfortable do you have any thoughts on this and if he's like don't ever fucking say that you know I don't know like what's his deal like yeah. You know, because communication is so important. And, you know, if a relationship starts like that, it's not going to end well. Right. If it starts in lies, it's I mean, it would have to be like, how would that can you imagine a successful ending to a relationship like that? Either of you. The problem here is for me is that the lies you're describing fall into the category of not that big of a deal. Like you're it. Two things are happening simultaneously. You're being put into a weird position because you're having to lie to somebody on behalf of your best friend. But you're also blow. This is just my my take from hearing one second of you talking about it. You're blowing the things he's doing out of purport. Like you said, he went. He was supposed to be out with the buddies, but he went gambling one night. But he now he's addicted to gambling, and it has economic implications on their. Are you in together. love with him? <laughs> Good question, <laughs> Natasha. No, I'm married as well. <laughs> so I'm kind of like I'm a little bit torn between. Mm-hmm. But if she has specific things that are making her uncomfortable, she can talk to him about them for sure. And it's sometimes I like phone calls because you can write them down. You know, you can say like, you know, this instance and this instance and you can kind of refer to it like as if they kind of get you off track or something. You can be like, well, I just want you to know, like, I just want to say my piece so I don't do it at the wedding. <laughs> Isn't there like, don't people say like, does anyone want to say something? Do people do that? Adam, did I you do that know. at your wedding? Did you have an objection phase? <laughs> What is that? <laughs> that is a bizarre. We went away. We went away on like a little three day vacation. Just got it all out in a cave. No, I, I think what Shana, I, I had one suggestion for you, especially because when you said you're married, I'm a big believer in uh, lying to make others more comfortable. So I think you could say to your friend, "Hey, when I got married, I remember my husband and I really had this like, let's get all our skeletons out of the closet." Or perhaps my husband didn't tell me this one thing. And it bothered me when I found it out. Just you can make that That's up nice. That's like good. That. And you can Co- do that on the coming phone. Coming from a place of, of <laughs> knowing. And then say, so this smoking crap, I would tell your wife because she's going to be pissed if you, she finds out later. Just and fake that you you had that little hurdle to climb in your relationship. And then it doesn't feel so and make finger it, waggy. Make it less about like you're making me uncomfortable when I have to talk <laughs> yeah. to her. And mm-hmm. that, that- But she deserves the truth because like- you know, no one wants to like think their husband doesn't do drugs and then get married and learn that they do drugs. Like, I mean, I don't know. It's like Moshe knows I smoke pot and he's cool with it. And he actually thinks I'm cool because of it. I think everybody that smokes just looks cooler and older. I've always thought that. But so- I'm just saying like, 
I wouldn't, I would hate to be like hiding that from him. That sounds so stressful. I know. Like, I need someone who, too, who like, knows who I am and believes me, you know, like I can just be me. Yeah. Totally. I think that's, I know. I think both, both Natasha and Adam are making a lot of sense. Like something soft to bring it up, but maybe even, I think you, cause to me, my, my instinct listening to it was like, actually the, 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 the problem that you're in is that you're being put in a position where you have to lie for him as well. You have to keep his weird, to me, not that serious lies, but you know, lies beget lies. And I, I see what mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking. Like if he's lying here now, like what happens in the future? Like you could split the difference between Adam's and Natasha's advice and say, cause I love what Adam said, like saying something like, I think it's really important to get honesty on the table with a, a, a potential partner before you take the plunge. But also I just want you to know, I personally am getting like a little bit weirded out by the idea that I have to cover for you because you're telling these specific things to her and they're not true because that will salvage your relationship with him. Because the truth is, if this is a valuable relationship to you and he keeps lying to her, you're going to lose respect for him and you guys are going to not be friends anymore. I actually predict you're not going to be friends in five years anyway, no matter what happens. But I, that's what's <laughs> going to happen. You're going to be like, this dude's a fucking dirtbag and I can't be friends with him anymore. But also, like, I would, like, 30% stay out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's not yeah. exactly, you have your own life. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think you can say your piece and say something so you feel good about your, because I would feel kind of bad if I never said anything, you know? Like, now I've gotten mm -hmm. a little close to her and, you know, use a little bit of Adam's lie and then, you know, just <laughs> kind of talk talk to him about it and say i just want you to know this is what i'm thinking and you know take it from one old married gal to a to, you know <laughs> it, this this helped me you and could do it you could do another cool thing you could get like really white girl wasted at the party <laughs> at the reception and then start calling him oh, out gosh. in public like being like <laughs> he smokes and he's a gambler and he's lying to you and see where that goes. You know, that could be fun. Or or rehearsal dinner and let that fun ha be for two days. <laughs> oh, cool. Have it, have, it, have it actually affect the ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a kind of a cool idea, too. Kind of sabotage. And then you can finally get the man you really want. Leave your husband for this dirtbag. <laughs> did, did we help you, Shayna? Yeah, no, that's great advice. Thanks, guys. What do you think I'm you're going to do? do it. What, 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 what choice are you going to make? Whose advice are you going to follow? I'm going to bring it up. I like the mix. I'm going to be make up a lie about something that we had a secret and then and then uh, tell him that it's annoying and I'm not going to lie anymore for him. Oh, I have a question. I have a question. Do you think they really love each other? Whoa, whoa, what a question. Yeah, I think so. I just, the lies, it's just really hard. Like, I think if she ever found out, she'd be mad for like a week or two, but probably get over it. Right, because they're small now, but you're right. I mean, a person that thinks it's okay to lie to their partner about multiple things is a person that's mm -hmm. setting setting up a life of dishonesty. Well, and, and Shane, I think you're right, though. I mean, our Natasha was right. Like, smoking weed and gambling once sound like minor things, but these are those are big things. If you mm -hmm. don't know your partner smokes weed or goes to the casino and suddenly that's like thing a thing that they do when you get married. That's real. You want to know that shit. That's well, real. Moshe, you could have told me that you watch UFC, that you were into <laughs> RVs, <laughs> that you like to go camping, that you watch Star Trek I, all the time. I didn't lie about any of those things. I just didn't bring them up you until it was too late. You just didn't do them until like yeah. two years into the pandemic. Well, in some ways, early early love is all lies because you're projecting, <laughs> totally. you're projecting a lie. Moshe brought over this self. like Igmar Bergman film, The Seventh Seal, and he was like, "Do you like? Do you like? Uh, do you like black and white cinema?" And he, he brought that over. <laughs> no, but and to then... my credit, the second date I brought over Rambo: First Blood, so I was showing you my cards. Okay, Shana. My last thought here is, um, you seem like a sweet friend and a good person, but you do have a lot of nerve uh, complaining about lies when your existence is a lie. Your name is Shayna and you're living a, in a Gentile milieu. And I think there's there's nothing okay about that. So I you love look it. In, look into that. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Shayna. See you later. Good luck. Thanks, bye, honey. guys. Bye-bye. Bye. She's married. She looks like she's in college. She might be married in college. Okay. You know, the Gentiles do things differently. I, didn't, I never thought I was going to get married. Did you always know you were going to get married, Adam? No, definitely not. No, I wanted kids, but uh, I, I so I, I saw that someone in my future. But now I got blindsided by my wife, and here we are. 
Oh, there's a great movie called Blindsided. You should both watch. It's really, really special. <laughs> Sandra Bullock. It's great. Um, oh, I love her work. Yeah, she's just truly a special person. Adam, you're a special person, and uh, this was great. Thank you for joining us. Tell us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Tell us where people can find your stuff. Well, I've got a podcast uh, that my friends and I are doing called The Grolic Saves the World. We've just, just hit 50 episodes, and we're having a lot of fun, and it's growing and growing. Uh, G-R-A-W-L-I-X, The Grolic Saves the World. We, we better the world around us by bettering ourselves one episode at a time. Oh, I like it. What does Grolics mean? It's his crew. The Grolics is the trio of myself, Ben Roy, and Andrew Orvidal. Oh. We have the TV show, Those Who Can't, and I it's love my comedy that. crew. And, I didn't yeah. realize that's what it was called. Yeah, no, it's uh, obscure and pretentious, just like us. <laughs> and speaking of obscure, pretentious stuff, they can also check out your new album, Hot Takes, filled with hot takes. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to see Adam live, he is a uh, a phenom. And a f- I would say the next George Carlin, actually. Thank you. I love yeah. that your dad Thank loves you. you that much. That's definitely how much I'm going to love my daughter. Maybe she'll get yeah, a historical well, home in Denver. Yeah, oh, that'd be nice. We should all be so lucky. And uh, shout out to Moshe's father for coming to all his shows, even when <laughs> he could be anywhere in the universe. He still is haunting his son. We know the beautiful part of it is that he, my father, of course, as you know, is deaf or was deaf. And now that he's a ghost, he can hear my comedy for the first time. And so that's why I think he comes so much. Nice. Isn't that beautiful? Moshe told our, <laughs> our child that there's a complaining ghost when we go for a walk. And now today she was like, so the complaining ghost is a child that died, right? That just complained too much. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's when it's when like a, a parenting live backfire <laughs> spectacularly, you know. <laughs> he was trying to get her to never complain for the long walk. And she just is thinking about childhood mortality. So there we go. <laughs> and buying sage to clean your house. Um, Adam, we're going to take another RV trip through Colorado if I can, if we ever leave this fucking state again. So right. I'll be over the mountains to see you. Anal man cave, open invite. I, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Adam, 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 Adam. No, no, no. It's no, a anal man cave at night. Natasha, come over a day and see how nicely I'm decorating. That sounds great. <laughs> Adam Kane Holland. Thank you for joining us. Thank man. you, Adam. You're so funny. Uh, so thank nice to talk guys. to you. Great to see you, man. Nice to see you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, Natasha, that's a that's a wholesome man right there, you know. Yeah, salt of the earth. A good a good fellow and a funny fellow, and he's uh, so funny. Whenever I would play the comedy works, he would always be going he's a, on. And he's what you call a killer. Crushing. A crusher. Very funny. Crusherino. You know who else is really funny? Who? You. Oh, thanks. And do you know who else is really funny? Mm. Mm. You. Hmm. You. Yes. Yeah. You're thanks, very funny, honey. honey. Uh, and speaking of being very funny, you should come see Natasha and I. This New Year's on our digital show. You should come see us. You should walk Log on. into your kitchen, wherever yep. you keep your phone charged or your uh, computer charged. Log on to that hot link. That hot link. In the day. Speaking or is it of, in the evening? It's in the evening. It's okay. New Year's Eve. And New Year's Eve. It's going to be a great time. It might even be, I don't know when this episode's coming out, but it might be tonight. It might be tomorrow. It might be real soon. Might have been yesterday. Might have been yesterday, and hopefully it wasn't. If you'd like to leave us a secret on our secrets hotline, you can call us at 213-222-8608. Or send us an email. Sorry we haven't responded to everyone. We have like a lot of uh, mailbag uh, Mm -hmm. advice questions, and we'll try to get through them. EndlessHoneymoonPod at Gmail and at endless honeymoon pot on instagram just follow us like us leave a comment i don't know i don't fucking like hanging out on there but you know just like give us a like or something i yeah. guess that's what people care about you can watch us on youtube every episode's up there youtube.com slash endless honeymoon and of course you can find this podcast on apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast we uh appreciate you and have a happy new year stay safe out there everyone we love you and more than we love you i love you thank you I love you too.